Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our very difficult Krakow run. Last episode we made a very major breakthrough after which I think the rest of the run is going to be relatively straightforward and that is we got coastal access. It's janky coastal access. It's coastal access through Moldova but we got coastal access. As a precursor to that we reduced autonomy on Austria twice in the first war grabbing East Glacia uh, and in the West Glacia as well and in the second war getting West Slovakia but we needed Austria's help and military access to be able to touch Moldova because Austria has part of Moldova and this is why this is some of the jankiest access possible is because we're going through uh, not just one other country but two other countries but they're both inside of our market they're both inside the ooh, excuse me why do we have access there then wait a ticket did these guys somehow not become our subject bruh what happened Okay, that's obnoxious as all hell. So somehow these guys are not, didn't get enforced on to become our subject. In either case, we do have access, but it's through like the Austrian coast, not like the normal Moldovian thing. So I guess we won't improve relations because I guess we'll just need to subjugate them twice. It's probably because we dropped to ins insignificant power. This is frustrating. Um, we were hoping that we had made a land bridge, but it was because we dropped to insignificant power, which might have been uh, partially to do with the fact that we gave up a state. Uh, we should have just gone for conquer state on Moldova, I suppose. But we can subjugate them later for just 9 infamy, and that 9 infamy plus the 9 infamy from um, uh, the previous subjugation attempt is still going to be less than just conquering them all out or straight out. And now we have access to the rest of the map, which includes a very juicy broken up China. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing kind of the meta expansion spots uh, that you do when you don't have a navy because we're just building our navy. And so this is going to be a lot of what we're doing as we try and eco up in West Galicia, still making great use or extensive use of uh, these um, edicts, which are going to cost... Uh... Didn't we build? One second. I was going to say they should be costing less. Uh, but, oh, this is giving universal pop political strength. I thought it was supposed to give, okay, well, fine, fair enough. We, I thought that this was, uh, supposed to be giving a reduction on the cost of an edict, but now it's not. Now it's giving universal pop political strength. I guess it's because, um, they adjusted the power block and maybe they did something different here. Maybe they swapped out of one creative legislature thing into a different thing, or I'm, maybe I'm missing something. Um, but okay, uh, in, any, in any case, now we'll have to try and figure out some weird sort of way to get access. We're gonna have to be with Austria for a while. Because they have a power block that's an ideological union, they will be able to keep enforcing um, ideology on us, which is a bit frustrating from a political perspective, so this is gonna present an interesting challenge, even though we're kind of normal. We're normal expanding, we're revving our engine, and we're ready to go. Oh, this mechanic is so aggravating to play underneath. Uh, Austria enforced regime change on us again, so now we have to have their government and all their stuff. And it's so painful. And okay, I guess we at least we have industrialists in. The industrialists are locked in, though. We can't change anything. Um, so the law passed that we had cooking. All right, I guess we're still probably going to get the wealth voting through. But, uh, yeah, we just get enforced on. It's just so, so, so painful. But in other news, we are making progress um, starting to establish uh, various interests that are native. Um, we have a subject in Indochina. We have a subject in Indonesia. We conquered Bahrain. Uh, we managed to get Lorenko Marx, uh, which is going to be pretty nice. In Bahrain and Lorenko Marx, we have added a navy. Um, so we're starting to get a little bit of a fleet up and going so that we can do some landings. We're trying to go after Congo, but we couldn't land them initially. Uh, so now we're waiting on a ship to finish so that hopefully with three boats, we can maybe get something done here. But uh, we also just might be like kind of a little bit bricked. Um, we should have another boat coming up soon-ish. Uh, it just the levels need to recruit up and we're at 943. And so this should come in probably by the time you get in there so it'll be four levels uh of both boat and troop uh which will allow us to this should go up to four perfect the timing is nice um 
I don't know if that can push into their nine, uh, even though they have irregulars. So that's going to be a little bit um, of a vibe. I guess we'll get to see the first battle here, how it looks. 22 offense, but uh, yeah, that's a little rough. So we're just tidying up a war versus Moldova and Wallachia, making both of them our subjects really nice. And we did see that Austria is getting bodied again, yet again, for like the fifth time. Uh, this time by Prussia for virtually nothing. Uh, foreign investment rights and humiliation. Uh, Austria is trying to get back some stuff. Uh, I don't think that we can make too good a use out of this opportunity because we're nowhere near being able to fight either one of these guys 1v1. Uh, and I think that if we were to try and go for independence, we would not be successful on Austria uh, because no one's really supporting us. I mean, maybe we could get Russia, uh, Russia or Prussia to support us like in a play. Uh, against Austria, something like this, uh, for reducing, uh, or for just getting free, but we still want to stay inside there. We still want to be a protectorate, at least for now, um, although we would kind of want to be in Prussia's, uh, market a little bit, but maybe this means, like, five years from now is the opportunity to go after Prussia a little bit, but I'm thinking Prussia might be the final boss. If they're clapping, uh, if they're clapping Austria here, they're probably going to form a pretty big Germany, and so they're going to be a pretty big opponent in terms of us getting back Polish lands like Posen, um, which we're going to be needing to do if we want to, you know, form either Poland-Lithuania or uh, Poland, depending on which seems better. Man, oh man, is this uh, regime change, like, super, super not fun. Uh, because we're stuck at, like, 29, and we had to even reduce taxes to try and law change to elected bureaucrats. Might not even be worth it to try and change laws under these conditions, uh, which is a little bit grim. I mean, maybe we're supposed to try and get free and just, like, run a weird market through here. That seems like... I don't know. I, it, it feels like we've got other stuff left to do here, and... No one's supporting our independence currently, so that would just be like a super, a super airball opportunity, I think, uh, because I think, ooh, wait a tick. All right, well, we at the very least have this relationship with Russia, but I think we're actually going to use this relationship to do some cheese. Uh, there was something, so... Russia was very interventionist, but we wanted to take this off of Shanxi, uh, this beautiful, beautiful state, which is Amur, which is the new kid on the block with uh, 18 gold. <laughs> Uh, and we wanted to take it, but Russia looked like they were going to defend. But if we declare on Austria and get Russia in the same play as us, then we can deck these guys without Russia intervening and get access to that sweet, 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 sweet gold. All right, so we asked for market control. They said no. And now we're going to demand independence here. Um, and Russia should be able to dust up Austria real easy. Uh, they did finish up their war with Prussia. I'm assuming they got humiliated. I'm assuming they're big sad, um, but we are going to be able to start a war here. I think we're going to put it on all defense. Um, we're currently hemorrhaging a lot of money. I'm not sure exactly why we're hemorrhaging so much money, but I think that we will not mobilize our conscripts, which is maybe a slight risk, but I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be fine. Uh, they're fearful. They're terrified. Uh, so I think as soon as the war pops, we will go for this. But we really want the war to pop. Um, we also can return state West Slovakia because we had given it to them before. Um, I think that hmm, them being fearful is actually a little bit of a problem. We'd rather they not be fearful. We'd rather this not be the case. Okay, what's going to be the best way to do this? Because we don't want to... We want to accrue the minimal amount of inf uh, infamy. We want to get Moldova. And we want to make sure that they don't back down. I think we're going to go for something like this. Let's see. Oh, I think liberating Transylvania to make that primary I think is a bit more expensive. Liberty Transylvania to make primary, I think, is 15 maneuvers. We could add war reparations and make that primary. I think that's what we have to do. Or revoke claim, make it primary. I mean, we. I think we want war re reparations, though. And so we have a little bit of a choice. We could make West Slovakia primary. How much would infamy would that be? Not too bad. I think we can run this. 
Hopefully they don't back down. We'll see. All right, everything is a hot, hot mess right now. We're super illegitimate. There's not much we could do about it, uh, unfortunately, because of this stupid enforced thing. But I think that maybe we could do a little bit about it because this is a decent rev for us to back down to, I think. Um, I think that we maybe switch off of something uh, if we do this. And I think that we, oh my God, we don't have the cooldown because we used it, frick. Okay, so we don't have the cooldown. Everything's really hitting the fan right now because there's no access to the rest of our external stuff until we get pick up the state. So this is really going to be rough. The other rev that was brewing before is now the, the lead rev that's brewing. We can still pass census suffrage because we're passing it off of uh, revolutionary activity. But even if we dropped down all the way to min taxes, we'd still be illegitimate. So this is why we're running max taxes into this. But this really doesn't do a whole lot, I suppose. Other than, I guess, increased radicalism. Wow, it just doesn't really affect income a lot, huh? Maybe this is because we're super illegitimate or because everything's cut off. Uh, we did get this. They just backed down without a fight, which is super nice. Uh, it's actually a really nice state, so we'll incorporate it because it does have, uh, you know, the other stuff as well. Um, but this is just super yikes. I, I'm concerned that we'll still be inside their power block even once we get freedom, which would be pretty obnoxious, but um, there's not too much we could do about this. Um, uh, we are pushing. We're making progress. We're, like, for sure gonna win this. I think we're almost at uh, what we need in order to enforce on them. Yeah, we just need, I think, this battle and then one more in West Slovakia, which is pushing pretty easily, so it's looking like we're gonna get everything, and then we'll have our own market, I think, because, well, we'll have our own market either way, because we won't be a subject, but the question is, is do we stay in their power block? I really hope we can just leave, uh, but I have a feeling that this won't be the case. All right, so we are free, and we are free free, um, I don't think we can reform our government yet. Yeah, we can't reform our government yet, but uh, we are free from Austria's grip entirely, so we won't keep getting our laws rolled back. And now we're just gonna enter like this time of very tumultuous rev, uh, like potential and actualization and all this type of stuff. I think what we might end up doing is we can form a defensive pact with Russia. Maybe this is worth it. I think with the Russia defensive pact, also, they will not come after us here anywhere near as likely. Uh, it'll give it ticking positive relations. Yes, eventually we do need to release um, stuff from Russia or take stuff from Russia, but maybe we go after Prussia first. We'll have to have a little bit of a think about which one strategically is a little bit better to go after because we kind of have all the Austrian states we need. Um, we can improve. They're not going to be domineering no more. We can improve relations with them uh, and look to maybe at some point acquire Austria as a subject way down the line. Um, a lot of our uh, losses were actually something we're not used to, which is um, we are having losses from nationally owned buildings, and so we got a whole bunch of trade routes going in. We were just planning on resolving them after the war, but then, like, uh, it was a little bit too much, so um, ownership does make it so that you're really sensitive to when wars start. It doesn't just nuke your economy um, it, from the perspective of the owners uh, or the, the capitalists. It's nuking it from, like, everything, so um, we'll also take... A uh, look at closer look at all these PMs and stuff uh, because some of these we do need to be changing up. Steam Donkey is a little bit better on coal than it is the other one, and we have really cheap coal. Uh, it's nice that the revs are continuing to oscillate uh, because as long as the revs are oscillating, they'll actually never pop. Uh, so, which is kind of an irony. It's like um, uh, we have so many diseases, and all the diseases are like a person, and they're all trying to run through one doorway. And they can't get through the doorway because they're all blocking each other. Okay, it looks like Russia has semi-negative relations with Prussia now. I think Prussia is the one we want to go after next. Because uh, I think we can release more stuff out of them. Plus, going for Silesia would be really strong. Uh, I think we can brick them pretty easy by get, taking West Prussia and Pomerania as well. If we're going to end up fighting them earlier. So I think... Uh, and we also have this opportunity for a defensive pact with Russia that we do not have with Prussia. So I think we're going to first come in here and make a defensive pact with them. Uh, and then second, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own power block. Oh no! 
our customized emblems that we already put in that the game didn't save. Drat. All right, we'll be back with some emblems. All right, it looks like it actually saved much of what we did. Uh, for this, we tried to get it as, you know, Poland as possible with a lot of wings and lions and stuff like that, mostly, etc. And then for the statue, we chose the flaming head of vengeance, except it's not flaming, but it is a skull. And of course, we had to be stylish, so we went with the top hat, the wings, because flying hussars. Uh, and then, of course, we needed to have our crude hoe in hand so we had that i think we'll do flying the flying hmm we could do flying hussars but that seems yeah sure flying hussars i don't know if i i think that that fits honestly i don't know the uh you know poland lithuanian loud car outside lore that well um and what we're going to be going for is we're going to be going for an ideological union because i think this presents a huge opportunity if we get oh great britain took beijing <laughs> we were wanting to take beijing they took beijing okay um but in any case i think we're going to go for ideological union one because we have been getting absolutely clapped with it and we're bitter and we're angry and we hate we hates it, um, so if you can't beat them, join them. Except we did beat them, but we're still gonna join them. But secondly, um, being able to enforce open borders uh, on your subjects, I think is something that's pretty valuable. Uh, this is a thing that I wanted to test out, and while, okay, in general, I don't think that this ideological union is like tier one, um, I do think it is a bit of an interesting one, and also, we will maybe be able to pass some laws better. Look at this, 25% minimum legitimacy, uh, suppression, bolstering cost. I think that the other one, creative legislature, we liked a little bit more, uh, where we get less stall chance, more preserve uh, law support and restore law support. This is gonna apply to all block members. So what we can do is we can enforce our regime on the block member, right? Uh, and then force them, now that we force this particular people in the government, notably the industrialists, uh, we can force them to then open borders and this sort of thing and also get off of uh tenant farming and these uh other sorts of things so that their peasants can migrate and so I i'm thinking that creative legislature is going to be what we go with um it's also going to give us a minus stall chance which is going to be nice for us because we basically are our laws are basically 1836 laws. We're 30 years in, but we have terrible laws uh, because of Austria. And so um, I think this will give us a good opportunity. Uh, we should have waited. We should have unpaused for Russia to accept, but they accept now here anyways. Um, and so we will get taking positive relations with them uh, and we will turn our eyes towards Prussia and kind of fixing internal affairs. Um, I think that our block should actually be... Um, Do we click form block? Did we not? No, did we not click form block? Okay, well, we'll form the block. Oh, we can't now. Apparently we were major just a, a second ago, now we're a minor power, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, all right though, I we can't make a block. So it's been a while since someone's offered to take on our debt, to be honest. Um, and I'm not sure that this is a good decision, but we do have a pretty big chunk of debt. We are losing quite a bit of money, so I think we're going to say yes, and we're just going to hope this doesn't come back to bite us. Something like that. We were paying an enormous amount in interest, and uh, hopefully we can recover from that uh, just fine and maybe get some sways up and going. Uh, we do have an undeclared interest. I think we're going to put it uh, over here. Actually, we could try for Congo again. Uh, we didn't end up enforcing on that quite a while ago, uh, but I think that now we're more than strong enough to be able to get it in, and so we'll maybe do that. We do have a ton of recruitable generals that uh, survived the purge, um, and so maybe we want to manipulate clout in a particular way while we have a lot of rural folk clout. I don't think so, um, but uh, we're going to be able to start moving around stuff a little bit better here as well. Uh, now that we're no longer being enforced on. And I think the first thing is we're going to try and get off of monarchy. Uh, because once we get on to parliamentary, then we can... I think we have an abdication under parliamentary or, or presidential. And so we can slingshot through a few laws. And also, of course, having these enormous movements and this really high radicalism actually helps out quite a bit for passing laws uh, in terms of speed. So hopefully we can kind of get these through. Basically, right on cue, there's an agitator coming, Mr. Nigel, uh, who is going to agitate for a whole bunch of stuff we like, hopefully in an order that is somewhat reasonable. Uh, we also are going to be, hmm, 
Yeah, I think we'll go and go with this. We're also going to be receiving a bankroll from Argentina. This is, without a doubt, kind of like the best place to park a strategic region. Uh, this is why we've been parking it down here. Now, normally you just get them as subjects, but since we're still a minor power, uh, we can get bankrolls instead, which, to be fair, is probably a little bit better for us right now. Um, we're about ready to start cranking up. We're not quite at 100 construction, but I think we're going to get to 100 construction fairly soon here. Uh, going to be building out of both uh, West uh, Slovakia as well as uh, West Galicia because the westerly places have all these uh, iron and gold mines. We also, as we get higher and higher relationships uh, with Austria, I think we're going to start nationalizing these. These do reduce the relations by one, uh, and we are providing a pretty good amount of compensation here. Um, but uh, I think that these are going to be worth it to get, especially the resource buildings uh, underneath our control. Now, no one else can invest in our nation anymore now that we're out of Austria's power block. Uh, so I think we're going to start putting buildings up for uh, privatization as well. So uh, if we do this, uh, we will allow the capitalists to buy these buildings. I think we're going to also put up any... Um, I'm not sure we have too many. Yeah, we don't have too many levels of this type of stuff, uh, but we want the aristocrats to buy the aristocrat stuff, and so we're going to make sure that we put on offer at least some aristocrat stuff. Why don't we nationalize a couple, one of these, just so we can put it up, uh, so the aristocrats have some options for things to buy. Um, we're going to put up these as well, uh, but we really would prefer stuff to be actually owned owned um the reason we didn't put it up for uh ownership before was because we didn't want austria buying it and in doing so uh put it in a position where they could decrease our liberty desire speaking of which almost all of our subjects have a ton of liberty desire we might be building in them quite a bit to help reduce that liberty desire as well as uh you know these gold mines will almost always be profitable we certainly don't mind putting in a whole bunch of extra gold mines and so that'll be pretty nice also let's take a look at the minting let's see paul allen's minting uh we are currently getting around 5k from uh this place here in Amur, uh, which is relative to our old total income, that is absolutely tremendous. Uh, so this is going to be really, really valuable for us. And we, as these turn into mines, we can strongly consider slotting one of these out for the gold company. So we are having a bit of a time trying to hold everything together. Um, every time we rev, uh, which this is a rev that was unavoidable from us for our presidential republic because we stopped passing presidential republic because there was another rev that was about to pop. Uh, and we started passing presidential republic because it was about to rev pop. So a little bit uh, grim. We do want to get on presidential republic or parliamentary republic. But then now our subject is revving and we cannot help them out. Nor Normally you'd be able to swap sides, but we can't swap because Krakow is already supporting Krakow and we can't side against ourselves. So this is of course a vibe. Even though this will be super straightforward and easy. Um, hmm... Building on the common amenity Krakow, pro-Russian associations have uh, made it co become commonplace within the Catholic Church. I think that Krakow relations towards Krakow deteriorate. Yeah, I would be. I would be. I would not be a fan of Krakow either if I was seeing what was going on here. Uh, but it's it sucks that we don't have a, a coastal a coastal capital here because we're just gonna keep breaking our subjects and then our subjects are going to rev and then we might lose Transvaal here. I'm not sure. So the crippled and beleaguered Austria revs for a liberal revolt and we managed to, from the liberal revolt, get a bankroll. This is going to be pretty nice. Also, look at our GDP line. Look at that. Just absolutely schizophrenic. We've been having a rough time here. We've been having a rough time out here. Just uh, revs and also lack of convoys and the place where we you know can try and build convoys is 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 this place is, uh which is not a full state because russia has some of it uh so we can't it's ineligible for mass migrations this is the next best place for us to try and build up ports we're building up ports here now i think we'll just add a uni there too because the qualifications are going to be a problem for both the ports and the other stuff but we have like no sources of ports we have subjects uh we have a couple subjects in china which is maybe a bit of a mistake in Jili and manchuria um just trying to expand out and like do productive stuff but it's like uh it's off this really awkward like coastal access 
it is a bit rough. We're thinking of like maybe going after Greece just so we have some place that's close to our capital to build supports. We were thinking of trying to like weirdly yo-yo sway here, but we just went for the bankroll. Uh, I think that this will be good. Um, and so hopefully no one too crazy sides with Austria uh, that we don't want to be uh, at war with or something like this. So we managed to grab a defensive pact with Great Britain, and now Great Britain is very protective. They're guaranteeing our independence, uh, and so is Russia. Uh, we do have to worry about them not liking the fact that we're defensive pacts with both of them, and France also hates Prussia, so I think now's maybe a good time to start fostering um, radicals, Polish radicals, in Prussia, which is going to damage our relations with Prussia. Uh, so it's immediately they rethink their attitude towards us and so this might um cause us problem well i mean not problems i mean we're we're trying to start a problem is what we're saying um but we are only trying to start a problem under the condition that we think that um we will be able to maybe get uh france and the uk to help us out with prussia uh because we definitely are nowhere near being able to yeah that's like not even not even yeah all right, I think we've sort of stabilized more or less. We're starting to pass some laws we like. Um, we would still have to get off of monarchy, but that's okay. Uh, we've gotten a lot of subject, uh, and this is giving us native diplomatic interests, which is allowing us to make some moves. And we just became a major power. And I think this is a kind of interesting decision point uh, because now we can make our power block if we want. But I think what we're going to do is rather than make our power block, which we need to rake back a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, Diplo to be able to do. I think rather than make our power block at this point in time, I think we look to fight Prussia once first because we know that the power block is going to give us a uh, negative relations with everyone who already has a power block, which is kind of all the powers that we need to help us. And I'm not entirely sure that we will be able to do this uh, sort of war without having access to assistance from other people so maybe we hold off and look to do that at the end of next episode and at the start of next episode try and figure out a way to uh, declare on Prussia such that someone will join us um, I think that this is uh, perhaps sensible um, we got some cheeky subjects too like Hunan is our subject um, we released them into their own market but this one was uh, definitely very cheeky because we yo-yo swayed to get them um, while they were having a rev, so it's kind of like uh, a free thing for now. Uh, hoping to eventually go after An Hui, um, which uh, is connected to Zhi Li, which is also a subject here, and in doing so, kind of accumulate some cheap Chinese states uh, with the idea that we are going to go, when we go a power block, I think we're going to go an ideological union, uh, and we're going to try and see if we can use the ideological union to force these Chinese uh, subjects um, to switch over to be open borders, uh, and then once they're open borders, uh, we will be able to obviously siphon off a huge amount of pops. Um, really excited that this happened during this game, because this is something I've been thinking about, is if China implodes, you can go ideological union and uh, try and switch things over. I think that, um, I don't know if it's going to be the case on release, I think that um, freedom of movement is still broken, uh, because the increased... Uh, the modifiers on uh, the increased exchange, uh, these do not apply to just a single state, they're global. And if you if they're global, you can get like thousands of migration attraction, which is just obscene. Um, I don't think they patched it yet. I think it'll probably be patched by the time the live version is out. Um, I hope it is, because it's kind of insane. But we'll probably go freedom of movement, because I think the entire... We would not go freedom of movement otherwise, big loud card that that card's moving free uh we would not go freedom of movement otherwise and kind of abuse this because this just seems kind of crazy um except for it's part of the ideological union strategy i think is that we are trying to really really drive uh, migration through acquisition of these chinese miners um and pulling them all into our country and so this is kind of our strategy, I think, moving forward. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I didn't even say what we did this episode. We This episode, we broke free from Austria um, for to completely free, and then we struggle bust through like a ton of revs and problems and this sort of thing. Anyways, um, I'm a little tired right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Do the YouTube algorithm. Have a good one.